Doodle butt. Okay, it's Friday. I made a post on my Instagram. I'm going to do a Friday flex off, and it is exactly 11 p.m. So I better hurry up and get this done so I can still call it a Friday flex off. We got some diamine sargasso C. We got some paper. We got some pens. And we are ready for a flex off washer case in case you're wondering uh, so we're going to do three different pens for the common ones too I hadn't seen this exact comparison so I thought why not and it's Friday so we got the Noodler's Ahab we got the Fountain Pen Revolution and we got the Pilot 912 so let's just jump into it they all have the exact same ink I all I filled them all yesterday so they're ready um, the ink's been sitting in them for a day, so they're ready to go. And we'll start with the noodler. So you can get, we're just going to talk mostly about flex and we'll chat about the pen for a quick second, but you can get real in-depth reviews on these pens. It was overall good pen, big, girthy. I like the feel. Like I said, almost every time I got big hands and I like a, a larger pen. It just fits better for me. Real small pens don't do it, but anyways, um, Build quality is pretty decent. The only thing I really don't like about this pen as far as the build or whatever is the clip. It's like super high. It just it wiggles. Mine's crooked. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, that's about it. I just really don't like the clip. And like you see, it's the same thing. When you go to open, you just naturally sort of wait a focus, or you naturally sort of grab here and it just it moves when you do that, so it's annoying. Anyways, we're gonna talk more about the flex. So in case you haven't seen one, which you probably have, you got this piston converter dealie. Um, piston filler system. It's not really a converter because the converter would, I mean, a cartridge would never fit that. Uh, I guess you can eyedropper it too. I've heard about that. Anyways, not talking about that. We're going to talk about the flex. So, the way I would rank or just categorize this pen is it's totally fine as a daily writer. Um, as far as the nib size, with no pressure, I would say this is a pretty standard fine. And it writes just well, like, you know, it's smooth, no complaints there whatsoever. So I'd say this is just like an everyday regular fine nib pen that has some flexibility. You know, it has a little flex characteristic to it and springiness to the nib. I wouldn't call this like a, you know, full flex pen. Um, so if you're wanting like a proper flex pen, this is not it. It's you'll see. So anyhow, it uh, you know you can broaden it just like if this was say that's about the ratio a little smaller stub would have as well. So that's kind of what this has. But you know, unlike a stub, you can control it, right? So you can do your see your railroads a bit. You gotta go real slow, and you gotta push like crazy. You can see the paper moving underneath my pen <laughs> um, to get that line variation. And yeah, you do get some issues with railroading. So, like I said, this is meant for something where you just, every now and then you're going to write a word. Here, let's, we'll do, okay, this is what we'll do for each, for each one. Um, so this is the noodlers. And we'll, just to keep track. So I'll try to make the sample the same. So we'll write, say, sunset. Maybe you want a pen you can write a nice happy birthday with and make it look cool. Um, I don't uh, do not have great writing, so <laughs> there are definitely people out there that can do a much better better job. But let's just keep it consistent. He just wanted to look a little fancier, right? So that'll be the sample. So that's kind of the variation you get. Whoops, smudged it a bit there. Um, lays down really good ink. You can see it's still quite wet. So it's a wet writer. It writes really well as a regular pen. Got no qualms or quarrels with it whatsoever. Like I said, the only thing I don't like is this. But um, if you want it for like a flex pen, like I guess this is just a, a pen you would want to write normally with. And if it has a little bit of a neat nib that flexes a bit, that's your go-to. And it's relatively cheap. I think it's in the 20-something, maybe $25, dollars, $23, something like that. Next step up, uh, as far as price, but a significant step up as far as performance, is this is the Fountain Pen Revolution. This is the Himalaya in Ebonite, green Ebonite. 
this is I believe version one I think there's a version two where they changed the filling mechanism and apparently the the uh, ebonite feeds a little bit longer to help with flow because you'll see this will railroad a little bit so if that's fixed those small issues and it's well worth I think it's instead of $32 it's 35 go for that so but very similar system as to the noodlers um, it's a thinner pen so it's not as girthy right so which means it doesn't hold as much ink that the noodlers one here holds quite a bit um, but yeah it, it you know it's a smaller pen um, there's, there's some people out there this is a perfect size for me I, I do like the noodler size a little bit more um, as far as build it's you're buying it for the nib little things like you know the clip band it's not you know either flush or at least rounded it's off center a bit just little things the cap band and whatever you know it's you're not buying this because this is such a superiorly well-made pen you're buying it because you can get a good nib and again the pen works just fine it's just you know anyways we'll get back to the flex here so this is the um i'll just go fpr um, and so this is the Himalaya. And this has what they call their Ultra. A little bit of railroad, not too bad. So you can see significant difference. Um, try to get back on frame here. So this is just minimal, no pressure. And again, this would I would say is a fine, but even um, you can see just from slightly more than no pressure, you get already get line variation. Doesn't take much at all. That's about the same as what the Noodlers does. And uh, that one is like ripping the paper almost. I've actually had it with this where it the tines splay, but it's so tight it actually snaps back, grabs the paper, and rips it, which is kind of crazy. But then if you put a little bit more to it, this lays down serious line variation. It keeps up pretty darn well. So, yeah, the pen's like 32 to 35. And the Ultrafix, Ultraflex is an extra fourteen dollars or something, so around fifty bucks you have a pretty serious flex pan. So maybe this is twenty-five and this is fifty twice as much. And like I said, um, you get such an amazing return and a slightly more uh, larger investment on the pen. But this is fantastic for flex um, for this price point again. It's a steel nib. Uh, they've done a really, really good job. So let's just write the same thing um, so we can compare. Happy birthday. There you go. It's a pretty serious difference compared with the uh, with the noodlers right there. All right, and lastly we got again all same ink. This is the Pilot Custom Heritage 912 with the FA nib. Let me get some better angles for you here. I never know what angle to put the camera when I do these videos. I have no idea. Should I be straight on or to the side? I don't know. It's tough. Um, anyway, so this is the Pilot. You know, Custom Heritage. We'll just, for time's sakes, 912. And so you can see, already see, like, that's barely pressure. Um, here's the absolute super featherweight. And even the little spots, it's already getting a little bit wider. So this one is definitely, again, I've never written with a proper vintage pen, but, you know, they say this is as close as a modern-day pen gets to 
a vintage flex, but when you see those wet noodle pans, I don't think there's even a close modern comparison. Um, but just even mild pressure, you start to get line variation. I know you can get more. Um, I don't want to push it too much more. That's about as far as I'd definitely go. But um, it keeps up pretty well. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, on the previous videos, I, I did, not just for the pen itself, I had to modify. I had to get an aftermarket feed. So this is from, uh, oh, it's like the Flex Fountain Pen. No, that's <laughs> Fountain Pen Revolution, but... Flex Feed Factory or something like that. I'll put the link in the description. You can check my other video ahead of there. I can't, for the life of me, just remember it now. But so it's an aftermarket feed design for you know different pens. They got different models. That's for this is this one's for the 912. And before I had this feed, um, this pen was terrible. Super disappointed when I got the feed that fixed it. But also even too, I had to adjust the nib. Even I, I finally got around to it. When I did my first review, I hadn't done the adjustment. I hadn't actually even had a chance to really look under under a loop, but the nibs are just too far apart. Uh, one is still a s smidge longer than the other. You can feel it with certain things, but um, you know, if you're paying that price for this type of pen, uh, they really need to address that. Uh, you know, Pilot's such a good company, so I don't know, something to do with quality control, specifically on these nibs. And same with the whole feed issue too, that's got to be resolved. But this definitely um, is really nice flex. I can also see why people get that Spencerian grind just to get the, ideally want that super fine line on the upstrokes. So you can really have that, that uh, line variation as well. But you can see this lays down a lot of ink. Let's finish the writing sample off. There we go. Oh, a little tiny miss there. But yeah, that's the end of it. Um, if we had a competition, which one would win? Now it depends on your metrics of what's a win. As far as nicest build quality and everything else, this is great. Might get a few deductions because the whole nib not working so great thing out of the box in the feed. Uh, but I'm sure if you if you want a 912 with a different nib, you wouldn't have that that issue. It's a really well made pen. I'm not going to knock it like that at all. It's made very well. But just that whole nib and, and feed issue on these is pretty surprising. Uh, but again, this is your most expensive one. If you're okay with the price tag and and that, it's pretty good. Uh, the noodlers, like I mentioned, is the cheapest one. This is good, as I say, it's just for a regular pen that has a little bit of flexibility um, to it. And then this, if you if the metric was flex per dollar, or however you want to rate it that, this would win hands down. Um, for the price point and what that nib can do, um, it's pretty amazing. So if you don't have a flex pen and want to try one out, I would pr probably jump straight to here. What you can also do... I, I, maybe I'll try to do this. I've just only heard of it. I don't know if there's a video where someone's done it, but apparently, um, I know you you can buy from Fountain Pen Revolution just a nib and feed unit for whatever it is, fourteen bucks or something, or twenty bucks, um, and it can fit into other pens. And I think it might fit into here. So you can leave a comment if you've done it or, or heard of it. Um, Maybe once I drain these and wash them out, I'll give it a try and do a video if it works or not. I could let you know. But uh, as far as value, I, you know, the Fountain Pen Revolution, absolutely. Or you just like a bigger pen that you could write normally with that flexes a bit. If that's what you want, get that one. Um, like I said, this does do the best job. But the significant more you got to pay for it to get... A little bit of a better job if, you, if you're concerned about it. If you have a bit of a budget, you can not go wrong with this pen. I highly recommend it. So, who won the fight? I don't know. If it's price point and everything else in value, it would be this guy. I would say that for sure.
Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like. I got my Instagram, the Doodle Bud. Uh, leave comments and all that good stuff. Have a good one.